Today, we're gonna to take a look at the strategy that I'm gonna to use to go from zero clients all the way to profitability in my brand new agency. So I've spent the last six years gaining knowledge, trust, clients, resources, and connections to finally be able to do this. So it's taken me a very, very long time to create this kind of strategy. And this year, I even hired my own marketing lead to make sure that we go through all the different systems and processes to make sure that the agency grows. So we're gonna go through all of this strategy and at the end, I'm gonna give you a free Notion PDF so you guys can use this entire strategy for free on your own businesses. Now, zero clients isn't exactly true because I obviously have a YouTube channel that has 50,000 subscribers. I already have a Twitter account. I already have kind of a list of connections and clients and everything that I can just bring over to the agency and be like, hey guys, we have a new thing. Come hire us here instead of here, of course. But what we're gonna talk about in this video is gonna be strategies that you guys can do on any site it does not need to be being popular or being big on youtube or anything like that it has nothing to do with that it's just scaling your site so there's three main parts to this number one is going to be previous clients now this is obvious talk to your previous ones say hey we're available again for these new services different systems different processes try to switch it up a bit make sure that they think that there's something new involved with hiring you again number two is going to be partnerships now partnerships we're going to dive into a little bit but the third one is going to be new clients and this is where we can split it up into two different pots number one is going to be short term and number two is going to be long term. Now, long term is what really excites me, and that's what's going to be in the PDF, which we'll talk about later on in the video. But first, let's dive into partnerships, short term, new clients, and then we'll go into long term, new clients. So let's go through the short term stuff. So, number one for short term is going to be social media. Now, social media is obviously something that I have an advantage in because I already have this channel and Twitter and whatever, but on Twitter, I only have 2.8 thousand followers, which is really very, very small on Twitter, and it gained over 15,000 views. So, it's quite incredible that with such a small amount of subscribers or followers or whatever, we can get a decent amount of viewership in this one post. Now, I recently did this post on Twitter that says, please start your own social account. And someone said to me, I don't know what to post. How do you find the inspiration? Now, something that I always do is I always just post whatever it is that I'm working on, whether that's on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube, obviously, is I'm just gonna post whatever is affecting me at the moment. If it's an issue with CMS and on my stories, on Instagram stories, you'll see that I'm always talking about things that I'm currently working on. That leads to a connection with either designers, potential clients, or anything related in that world. Now, as long as you help one person get to where you are today, just by giving them a little bit more of knowledge in that matter, that's it. That's all you need to do. You don't need to change the world. You don't need to do whatever. Your first few posts are going to be very bad anyway, so it doesn't matter. Just get out there and start posting things that you're doing anyways. Just keep going and keep posting and keep trying things, and eventually you're going to connect with the right people. Number two is going to be videos. Obviously, this is a video. You now know about my agency. Number three is gonna be partnerships. Now, partnerships are gonna be partnering up with different agencies and different startups and businesses that have different services to us. So we can help these businesses become a more complete service by offering, for example, web design, Webflow design. If we partner up with a branding agency, we can say, hey, you guys can charge more money if you include us in your package for web design, for development, for whatever. That is a win-win-win for all of us. So they get to charge a higher amount, we get a project, and if we ever have a branding project, then we pass it off to them. So it's kind of like a good partnership between two different agencies. Now you can do this with SEO agencies. You can do this with photography agencies, branding agencies. So next up, we're gonna talk about podcasts and guest posts. Now podcast is pretty simple. You just wanna be in front of other people's audiences, whether that's through Twitter Live, whether that's just a regular Apple podcast, whatever it is, get in front of audiences that aren't usually in your world, just so you can talk to them. And okay, podcasts can even be going to other networking events, going up to other conferences and presenting yourself as a service provider in this industry. Then guest posts. Guest posts is gonna come into the SEO world. I don't really cover SEO that much. If you guys wanna learn more about SEO, I'm gonna leave a link to my brother's YouTube channel in the description. He takes care of the SEO stuff. So guest posts are gonna be very powerful when it comes to backlink and also just getting your face and content in front of a new audience. So imagine if we do a guest post for Webflow or for Notion or for any of these massive, massive companies. Now their audience gets to know us and what we do just because we offer our services in creating a blog for them. So next up is gonna be long Long term. Now, this is my favorite part of agency because YouTube was a long term bet and it paid off. So I think that these kind of long term bets are the ones that are most likely to actually work out, even though they're the most boring ones. So this is the actual agency site. And if you haven't seen it before, I recommend that you go ahead and check out in the link in the description. But let's talk about the Knowledge Hub to get started. So this is one of our primary bets inside of the long term world. So number one, we've got the case studies. Number two, we've got designer insights. And number three, we've got the blog. 
So let's go into case studies first. So case studies is important. And before we even get into this, it's important to note they probably should have a website because if you're creating websites and your own website isn't amazing, then it might not be the best look to potential clients. But anyways, one of the important things inside of the Knowledge Hub is to have good case studies. Now, case studies are gonna be important because you don't only wanna showcase the pretty visuals for the clients because yeah, that's important, but you also wanna showcase what results you achieved for this client. Now for this client, for example, they were able to get over 340,000 British pounds as an investment by showcasing their MVP site to investors. So this is something tangible that we can showcase on our site. We can say, hey, this is a result and there's other results on all these different case studies. So that's the actual important bit of the case study. The fact that it looks good and the colors are pretty and this green is cool and this whatever, it's just extra. But this is what actually matters. 25 million investment in venture capital. Everything else doesn't really, I mean, yeah, like it matters, but what matters is the actual content, the, the value in what you can bring to the table. That's what actually really matters. So number two is gonna be designer insights. Now designer insights, we're taking all of my videos that I've recently created and creating blogs out of them. And the interesting thing about this blog is that if you look up this exact keyword, I'm already starting to, I mean, of course my video, but I'm already starting to rank for the content itself. Now it might be a super tiny keyword, but the fact that we can get people's eyeballs onto this page, which might be able to give us their email so that we can then give them more insights into designers. And eventually they maybe might want to start a project with us because we gave them so much value and blah, 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 blah. This is a very, very long-term strategy, but it's one that I think I'm very confident in and comfortable doing because I already have this massive library of content. So if you guys see any familiar faces here, we're going to start to populate this designer insights with a lot of content pretty soon. But before we get into more of that, let's talk about the blog. So the blog is different to the designer insight. The designer insight is something that is more geared towards designers, obviously, that they might look up and actually get to know about us. Now, one thing that might be a little bit different is maybe how to build a framer site in nine minutes. So this kind of video might appeal to both sides of the spectrum. But anyways, blog is more geared towards clients. Now, this is gonna be important because we're now targeting keywords that our potential lead or potential perfect client might actually be looking up. So how to build a startup website. If they look this up, and I doubt that, we're gonna come up at all because we're a brand new site. Yeah, probably not. We're competing against these massive, massive agencies. But again, long-term, right? If we're competing or if we're creating content like this, how to build a website for your startup, and we're giving them a step-by-step -step guide and we're attaching these different case studies that we mentioned inside of this website, then it's a pretty good indication that we know what we're doing and we are able to help them with their own website and with their own startup. So giving people a step-by-step -step educational platform where they can understand how to build a website and eventually they can contact and hire you for that very same thing, that's a pretty good strategy to take on. Now, you're not gonna see results immediately because this stuff, especially this kind of keyword, takes so, so long to work out. But if you're going for something a bit smaller, like seven cool startups, and you're showing them just cool stuff to look up, then I guarantee that this is something that we might actually be starting to rank for. And there you go, seven cool startup websites. Now, who's looking up seven cool startup websites for inspiration? I don't know someone and that's all that matters no but it's going to be a little bit more calculated than that obviously but for example webflow to spine integration let's see how we can i mean i don't know if we're gonna be coming up for this it's i mean we're yeah because we're looking at the exact same thing okay so yeah we're, we're starting to appear in the eyes of Google, which is amazing and kind of hilarious because we launched two days ago, which is kind of surprising me, but anyways. So for example, this page here, we're giving them a step-by-step -step example of how to do it. We're attaching a couple works where we did some spline stuff. And if they want to, they can get in contact with us and work through our cal.com thingy mabob going on there. Okay, so we went through the knowledge hub and I know this video is kind of dragging out, but stick with me. We've got the case studies, designer insights, and then blogs. You might be thinking, wow, that's kind of, a, that's a lot of content to be creating already. And it is, but just you wait. So we've got all those case studies and then we've got these service pages. Now, this is something very, very interesting. We are now attacking these very specific keywords that other people might not be attacking. Now, a bad example of this might be something like WordPress to Webflow migration. How many businesses, first of all, just dedicate themselves to that Number two, have a massive grip on this keyword. Probably a lot. So that's not the best keyword to go for, exactly. But maybe something like adaptive design, if we look up our agency, we try to find it somewhere here. All right, so it might take a little bit longer to rank for these kind of keywords. Totally fine, by the way, totally fine. But anyways, this kind of strategy makes a lot of sense for us because we're doing this content anyways, and we're creating these websites that are featuring this kind of stuff anyways. So it's just very easy for us to say, okay, project done, let's convert all this knowledge into words, put these words, on the internet, someone's gonna find these words and wanna hire us for writing these words and for showing us the work that they've done. So it's very simple for us. It's a very intuitive strategy where we say, all right, we're already doing this stuff. Let's just put words into it 
and eventually something's gonna come out of it. So this kind of strategy makes a lot of sense for agencies, makes a lot of sense for local businesses, international businesses, it doesn't really matter. SEO which is just something that every agency and startup needs to be doing. So if you guys wanna find out more about this agency, the link is gonna be in the description. If you guys wanna work with us, obviously the link is also gonna be in the description. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any questions about your own site, please leave a link down below. I will help you in that comment. So thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.